Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you all having a great day and a great week. In this video, I would like to talk about Binance and their they have a security incident recap uh, listed on their blog. Uh, I have just saw this tweet that they tweeted out this morning, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read that and just basically uh, go through it and just give my reaction to it. I, I haven't covered much Binance stuff or the hack or anything. I haven't, I actually haven't really kept up with like uh, the Binance stuff except for all I know is that they had 7,000 uh, Bitcoin stolen, which <laughs> hacked or conspiracy. I don't know. Who knows? It's nothing new to me. I've, I've heard I've heard these Bitcoin hacks all everywhere on, on exchanges and whatnot. So in past history, so it, it didn't really phase me at all. But uh, I'm going to go read through this. But first, before I read that. Bitcoin is past the mental $8,000 USD at $8,243.99, guys. Look at this, up 13%. We're back in the green, guys. Look at this. It's it's going higher and higher. We're making uh, higher highs and uh, higher lows. Is that how you say it? <laughs> and for my Canadian friends, let's see here. The Canadian price of Bitcoin is over the mental... Uh, price of 11,000 Canadian. So, congrats to all of my Canadian viewers. I think it's about 13 to 15 percent of you are Canadian. So, thanks to you guys. <laughs> congrats to you. Look at this, 11,000. So, yeah, that's all I just wanted to show about the price because you guys like seeing the price of Bitcoin. So, let's keep it going here. Binance blog. This is the um, the blog on Binance of their news and updates from the world's leading cryptocurrency exchange, which was also able to get hacked, but yeah, oh well. Okay, so security incident recap. In this article, I will share a recap of what occurred in the past two weeks, including lessons learned and stress dealt with, and wisdom gained. So this is by CZ. It's, he says, security incident update. So I'm just going to read it all through here, guys. What happened? A group of hackers was able to gain control of a number of user accounts and made some large withdrawal requests in such a way that they bypassed our pre-withdrawal risk management checks. Our post-withdrawal risk monitoring system caught the actions immediately and suspended all subsequent withdrawals while all things oh, sorry, while things are crystal clear in hindsight at the moment, we weren't 100% sure as to what exactly happened. Was it an actual user action, a glitch in the system, or maybe a hack? As we were still evaluating the situation at the time, we decided to proceed with caution. I put a tweet out saying that withdrawal servers are in unscheduled maintenance mode while the team continued to investigate what happened after confirming it was a hack. More questions followed. So what confirmed it was a hack, guys? <laughs> well, let's see here. How much did the hackers withdraw? So they said around seven thousand to eight between there between eight seven thousand and eight thousand. Uh, were there previous withdrawals that didn't we didn't notice? How many other accounts did the hackers have? What other risks are involved? How did the hackers know our risk management rules so precisely? Do we have a mole? Yes, you do. Uh, what do you <laughs> what do we need? Just kidding. Uh, what do we need to do to get the withdrawal system online again? Uh, while the team was investigating the above, there were further questions needed to be answered. How should we communicate? What would the community reaction be? <laughs> How much reputational damage would we suffer? Obviously, I feel like not that much. <laughs> I think Binance is still doing pretty well. So uh, in tough moments, we always choose to rely on our ethos, users first and be transparent, which um, CZ has. and. Actually, I saw a video of, uh, I, I think it was one of those lie, uh, those people that can read uh, reads people's reactions to see if they're lying or not. And someone did a reaction, a live reaction of, uh, of CZ when he did he, the live AMA on Twitter. And apparently he was, he was totally um, like distraught and stressed and everything what he was saying was true. So um, I, I think, yeah, he had nothing, apparently he had nothing, it, 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 it seems like he has nothing to do with this hack or anything. So uh, it was an actual, um, actual real situation and stuff. So uh, maybe I'll find that video later. 
Okay, so the next part in this blog is communication. After the initial incident, we decided to put out a notification across all of our channels regarding the security incident. By then, we were relatively certain that there was only a single affected transaction. All of our other wallets were safe. We were cautious that the hackers may still have control to additional accounts that we were not fully aware of. Further withdrawals still posed a risk, and we ne needed to make a few significant changes to the system before we could re-enable withdrawals for our users. This security incident notification stated an estimation of one week of suspension on withdrawals. In our techno technology world, you can never accurately estimate how long changes might take. It is quite different when you compare it to a repeated predictable work, but our users and community needed an estimate, and once communicated, it became a target deadline for our team to deliver. I did not know how the community would react to a one week of withdrawal suspension, but luckily being transparent paid off and we received tremendous support from our amazing community, which uh, the overall the overall outlook and feel, in my opinion, was definitely um, definitely supportive of Binance. So uh, pr props to them, props to Binance. Uh, they took everything, they all took all the precautions and uh, they were really transparent. And uh, they, they just gave all the answers right then and there. So really, really good. Congrats to CZ. So uh, lesson during the crisis, constant transparency, transparent communication is key. Okay, so the AMA, uh, he had the previously scheduled a video AMA just a couple hours later. I thought it would be appropriate to keep it as lots of people would have questions, which turned out to be the right thing to do. I agree. Totally agree. Seeing me live did put a lot of community at ease. The live stream was analyzed to death, including body language analysis. Oh, okay, so <laughs> here it is. Yeah, this is the one I was talking about, the body language analysis. Uh, here, let's let's just take a look at it here. Actually, no, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get copyright strict, but uh, you guys can take a look. I'll have this link down below, uh, which I thought was a very good thing. It truly shows how crowd will work as a hive mind on different aspects of the analysis. The body language analysis results were very positive, which was, which is reassuring. Lesson: Get on get on a live video stream uh, during a crisis. Your users deserve to know not just what happened, but how are you doing and handling it, including including allowing them to judge your mental state for themselves. Exactly. Wow, that's like yeah, that's true. I would like to see a nice hash uh, uh, body language. Oops, body language analysis. Uh, oh, I just totally lost the document here. Uh, the nice hash one, where the nice hash did a live AMA um, or a, a, a stream, I believe it's on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I should get them to look at that. Anyways, um, uh, just next thing, uh, distractions. Before the AMA, I had I had been up all night and I was really I was really feeling the effects. So. I took a 15 minute nap just before the AMA. Upon waking up, my team told me there was an interesting proposal from a Bitcoin core developer. I read it I read it for a few seconds. It involves something called a reorg. While I know it's technically possible for rollback in a 51% attack scenario, it never occurred to me that it is also technically possible to change one transaction and keep all other transactions intact. While hugely incentivizing the miners, the discussion was already pretty hot on Twitter, so I mentioned it in the AMA and as something that was suggested. Little did I know it was a taboo topic, lesson learned. Definitely a taboo topic. A lot of people were pretty uh, pretty vocal on Twitter and uh, Reddit and whatnot, so a lot of people were actually pretty mad. I, yeah, I don't have much opinions about that because I don't really, I, I didn't even know that was possible myself, so... Uh, either really cool or really bad idea. I don't know which way to look at it. So, uh, mental state. I am not going to deny it. My first re reaction was F. The second and third reactions were also the same. A few moments after that, I, be I began to come with terms with it. Well, that sucks. What should we do now? Lots of people were waiting for me. Some, of, some, of, some for instructions, some for information, and some for reassurance. Lots to do. Let's get on with it. Checking with the team, they were already they were already a couple steps ahead of me. Implementing an additional security measures to further further ring fence our systems and discussing all available options. The entire team was online. I have seen this mode before. It's called war mode. Luckily, our team is accustomed to high pressured situations, and our urge and our urge to fight was stronger than ever. A few of them even gave me a pat on the back for planning to do the live stream AMA. 
A few variations of Balls of Steel Boss came up a few times. They were cheering me on. I knew that was a good sign. Uh, what a supportive, uh, supportive employees. A supportive team. That's awesome. Okay, uh, next up is funds. So, after the 10 seconds of FFF state, I did a quick mental calculation. 7,000 BTC. Fine. I know we have more than that in our own BTC funds alone. There is enough. Mentally, a second calculation eased my thinking. The amount was about the same as a quarterly burn we did a, about a year ago. All right then. Also, this is not to not a single outlay of cash percentage-wise of Binance. Back in September 2017, there when the Chinese government issued a letter banning I, ICOs and recommending projects to return the money to investors, the news alone caused many tokens to drop below the ICO price, and many projects teams couldn't return the whole amount to users. Oh, that sucks. While BNB stayed strong about 6x of the ICO price, Binance did help a number of projects raise money on our platform and they were affected by this policy. So we did a quick calculation. If we were to help cover the costs of our users and those for those projects, it would cost a rough, roughly uh, 6 million USD. Putting this in perspective, while we only raised US 15 million two months prior, we spent a bunch of money and were, ba and were barely clash, uh, cash flow neutral at the time. We decided to do it anyway. I was moving in a, I was, I was, do it anyway. I was moving in a subway when the team called me. When we made that decision together in less than five minutes, that was more than 35% of all cash we had at the time. The goodwill that decision have generated eventually brought many, ma us many users from China and all over the world and helped fuel our growth. So this time, this $40 million represented much smaller percent of our cash reserves, plus we had the Seifu fund that could fully cover it. Now, I wanted to question one thing, the Seifu fund. I uh, Secure asset fund for users, I believe that's what it is. Uh, interesting that they have that and uh, I don't know. I've heard someone. I've heard some conspiracy that this Seifu fund was uh, meant, obviously, for their own insider hack to happen. And I don't know. That that's just something I I, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna go there. Anyway, uh, scratch that. I don't believe that. I I don't know what to believe. Anyway, this is this, these kind of hacks happen all the time to exchanges, so it's nothing new to me. And uh, we've been most of us have been through all that, so uh, we're pretty phased by all this. Anyway. We thus announced that we cover the entire loss in full. Yep, so they did. Lesson, money can always be earned later. Do the right thing first. Do the right thing. Yes, exactly. Uh, who's that guy? Uh, a comedian, really funny guy, Indian guy. <laughs> Do the right thing. Okay, help offered. We got tremendous community support from people defending us to people helping us answering questions in the community on Twitter, Telegram, and Facebook. The Binance Angels... Uh, have been running at full steam on multiple communities, addressing questions and reassuring our users around the clock. Thank you, thank you, we thank you. Many partners jumped in to help. Analytics teams start to, to help us track the stolen funds. Example, Peck Shield, Whale Alert, etc. Uh, exchanges and wallet servers off offer to block any deposits associated with the hacker addresses. Some of them may have perceived our competitors by some people, but I am impressed how the entire community came together and stood united at the time of need, which is very, very, very good. We also uh, received numerous offers to help from law enforcement agencies around the world. This is a result of working with them closely in the past, usually helping them to solve cases. Now they offer to help us in return. Amazing. Lesson, being transparent makes it easier for others to help you. 100%, 100%. Okay, uh, almost there, guys. Sales guys. I've got about 40% new, 40 plus new leads from various security experts, consultants, and companies offering to help. While some clearly intended to help, many were simply trying to sell their services. While all help is fully appreciated, the timing was actually a little off. It would not be good for me to schedule 40 calls during the week, and when our system is partially down, some even flat out suggested that we give them full access to our servers so that they can help us do forensics. We politely declined moving on. Wow. Some even flat out suggest that we give them full access to our servers. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, depending on the type of company and how credible they are, I don't know. That's kind of sketchy in my, in my books. 
uh, one quarter in a week. Uh, our team pushed on day and night in places where we can con congregate in small uh, temp offices. We had an I IKEA temp beds rolled out. I won't go into details here as we don't dis disclose our security practices, but to bring back the system online in one week, all of our teams did more than a quarter's work of work in one week. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. Props to the teams at Binance. That's awesome. Uh, a blessing in disguise. Speaking with various team members, as correctly analyzed by the community members, such as uh, Guantam Chungani, not sure who that is, uh, this incident may actually be good for us in the long run. Security is never an ending, ending, ending practice, practice. There are always more things to do in security, and we have implemented many of them in this last week, and will continue to implement more in the future. Given this incident, Binance has actually become far more secure than before, not just in the affected areas, but as a whole. Okay, great, that's good. Lessons learned. We always maintain constant and transparent communication with our community during the crisis. We believe this is a, to be a strong factor that contributed to the support we got from the community in return. One clear measure uh, is the BNB price. It dropped a bit on the initial news, but not nearly as much as one would have expected. And even before we resumed withdrawals, it has already made a strong comeback and all and hit all times high all time highs in USD again. We hope this will be a new benchmark for how people project teams uh, should communicate with their users during both the good times and the tough. We and we hope this will help our industry healthier and stronger. And we th thank you. So that was from CZ of Binance. Um, great, guys. This this was a really good uh, recap uh, from Binance. I, I really haven't been keeping up myself. So props to them. I congratulate them. And really, transparency is the key in terms of uh, what happens in terms of a, like a hack and whatnot. So... Uh, I think Binance had, they have been doing it right. They have been doing it right. And um, yeah, good times ahead for Binance. They, in terms of, and now in terms of the Bitcoin price, guys, like it's, it, it hasn't been phased by this hack. So uh, it's been going up as of, as of late. So uh, pretty props, props to that hack, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty curious of where the 7,000 Bitcoin has gone to. So uh, maybe I'll do another video just finding out where that could go. Uh, where they have been going so maybe i'll do some research on that but anyways guys let me know what you think down below and thanks for watching me day in and day out i i appreciate everyone and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to smash that like button and whatnot and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out